Dungo's part of your balanced breakfast. Add a pile of Dungo's to your morning routine. Dungo's. Hey kids, what's your favorite cereal? Is it Weetabix? Bran Flakes? How about water in a bowl? I grew up in the 90s, a time of heavy consumerism where advertisements were everywhere. The industry was oversaturated with companies greedily trying to get you to buy their products through over-the-top, eye-grabbing, shameless marketing techniques. And with us being none the wiser, we ate it all up. And unlike my parents' wallets, I enjoyed every second of it. Almost every product that I can think of that was geared towards kids back then always had some sort of promotional tie-in. There was even cross-promotion in our cereal! Buy a box of cereal and get a neat toy! Or even those cool compass flashlights! Or even get a free CD-ROM game of Monopoly and Toon Tycoon! Thrilling in consumers with the promise of video games always gave kids like me more incentive to begging my parents to get me one of those specially marked boxes of cereal. Some companies would even go the extra mile of not just including a free CD-ROM within their cereal, but they would also produce games of their own respective mascots to help promote their cereal brand. That's right. Tony the Tiger isn't just a cereal mascot, he's also daddy. Oh wait, I meant he's also a video game mascot, yes. That's what I meant. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at some of the many cereal box games. So grab your spoons and your bowls and let's get into the grub. Literally. The first game we'll be taking a look at is called Tony and Friends in Kellogg's Land. Hint, it's called Tony and Friends because no one knows who the f these other guys are. Like seriously, who are these dudes? I've never even seen some of these mascots before. You've got a Disney bear, some random monkey, and screw it, I'm calling you Slippy. Here I go! Now for some reason, this CD-ROM game was only released to kids in Germany. But us kids online managed to share it around and found a way to play it on our own. The game doesn't have any subtitles, but that doesn't make too much of a difference, as a little bit of German that is in Included, it is simply in there to explain the mechanics of the game. So even in the original translation, there sadly isn't much story to Tony and friends at all. I think the main objective of this game is to collect all of the cornflakes and vitamins while beating up enemies that stand in your path. But I can't imagine being very excited to collect vitamins and cornflakes. I mean, for what reason and why? And why are we killing military ants? Whoever came up with such a concept? You must have to be really desperate for nutrients to pick up random frosted flakes off of the ground. Funny thing is, though, even though there's no real rhyme or reason to this game, I found it to be surprisingly fun to play through. It plays a little bit like Mario World and kind of reminds me of that old Lion King platformer for the NES. For just a cereal box game, Tony and Friends also has a pretty catchy soundtrack. After playing through this game, I couldn't get some of these tunes out of my head. But I guess this catchy music should be expected from a company that creates and markets cereal. Making memorable jingles would be second nature to them. By far, the music is the best part of this whole thing. It's so upbeat and energetic. It makes me feel like I'm in some sort of old school ad that promotes healthy living. <laughs> In addition to the game's soundtrack, it's also decently designed and easy on the eyes, especially considering that it's a cereal box game made with the intent of not being taken too seriously. I think it looks fine. My only real issue here is Tony. I just can't get over how awkward he looks. Not only is his appearance a little unsettling, but I feel like overall his character sprite could be much smaller. He sort of seems misplaced at times among all the platforms and obstacles. He's just so large in comparison to everything around him, and it just looks weird. The image of a large anthropomorphic tiger peeking through a door? It looks a little creepy and voyeuristic if you ask me. And none of the other characters seem to look as weird. Like, is there something weird about Tony that I should know about? Maybe he's not the sweet and wholesome soccer coach we thought we all knew. If he was creeping through my door like that, I'd give him a piece of my mind. How about you respect people's boundaries, dude? <laughs> Great. How about we take a look at the widely popular game by Czech Serial known as Czech's Quest. This game lived out a much greater legacy than the actual cereal it's supposed to be advertising. Check's Quest was the first game to ever be included in a cereal box as a prize and was released to critical praise and over the years has accumulated a large cult following for being such a memorable and fun game among nostalgic fans. Which is understandable because not only is the game a lot of fun, but Check's Quest was the first game a lot of adults ever played growing up. It was received so positively with young gamers following its release that the game won both the Golden Effie 
Award for Advertising Effectiveness in 1996 and the Golden Reggie Award for Promotional Achievement in 1998. It even ended up spawning a couple of sequels. Chex Quest was marketed as a non-violent first-person shooter aimed at kids 6 to 9 years of age and was heavily influenced by the popular series of Doom games that all the older kids were playing at the time. Man, I had no idea this was promoted as a PG alternative to Doom. My parents should have just given me Chex Quest as a kid. It would have saved me so many nightmares. You play as the Chex mascot, an earthworm gym, powdered toast looking warrior whose job is to defend the planet Basilic from the invasion of evil Flemoids, a weird green species of alien who have captured helpless human colonists whom the Chex warrior must save. I remember these enemies for their distinct, annoying, and loud cries that they'd let out whenever you'd encounter them. It was so off-putting to hear, and even if you couldn't see them, you always knew when one was hiding behind a corner. <laughs> You can use different weapons to slay the Flemoids, like your Zorcher that teleports enemies back to their own dimension. But when push came to shove, my weapon of choice was to gouge their eyes out with a spoon. Because nothing says first person serial shooter better than a spoon. As you navigate through the different stages, you can pick up health packs and energize on random bowls of fruit found throughout the game. Gee, mm. I wonder why the Chex hero has to stock up on delicious healthy fruit in order to keep his energy up, and not a handful of Chex cereal. Speaking of cereal, I feel like I had a lot more fun playing this game a few times in my youth than I did actually eating Chex cereal. It's definitely one of the least memorable foods I remember eating. In fact, I don't even think I remember what Chex cereal tastes like. Maybe I should use this video as an opportunity to give it a bit of a taste test. I'm only gonna cover this next mascot game briefly because, well, in all honesty, there really isn't much to it. Cocopuff Sunny's Race is probably the least exciting serial game out of the four games I picked to discuss. I'm pretty sure everyone remembers Cocoa Puffs and how much Will I Am wants you to put your milk in his Cocoa Puff. But does anyone really remember the bird that was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and that his name was Sunny? No? Oh, come on, you know him. The bird. No? No. No, 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 not that one. You know, the one that's friends with Count Chocula and they both have a really problematic black fetish. In this game, Sunny is embarking on a race to collect all of the chocolate pieces to ensure that every Cocoa Puff is packed with the real Hershey's cocoa. Instead of just letting the Hershey's factory handle it, somehow running a race and collecting chocolate items will ensure every Cocoa Puff is packed with chocolatey deliciousness. See, none of that even makes sense. Even his friends don't know what the hell he's up to. This kid legitimately says, Sunny, why are you putting yourself through this? To which he replies, I'm in love with the cocoa. Sunny's race is... Not that good. I don't really know why they bothered to put this on a CD, other than the fact that it would seem novelty to buyers of Cocoa Puffs and the kids would be like, Yippee, it's a game! It's repetitive, boring to play, and visually there's just too much going on at times. It looks really similar to a Neopets Flash game I played once upon a time ago, and I think if I had played this as a kid, I would have probably put this down after trying out two or three stages. Actually, I did own this CD, and I remember I played it once and then I immediately moved on to Roller Coaster Tycoon. You know, an actual enjoyable game that I got from another box of cereal. But don't fret guys, Sunny's Race may not have been all that exciting, but if you're into Tamagotchi, Chow Gardens, and Pokemon, this next game might be right up your alley. The last game we'll be looking at is, you guessed it, Captain Crunch's Crunchling Adventure. Everyone seems to remember this game. It was that weird virtual pet simulator where you train your Crunchling through a series of activities and use him to fight against the evil Crunchium thieves once your Crunchling has grown big and strong. I'm just returned from the center of the earth. Not long ago, I visited Crunch headquarters and discovered they were running low on Crunchium. Someone or something was blocking the flow of Crunchium. Piloting the subterranean, I charted I the course of the pipeline to the and very end of the tunnels around yeah, this game had some weird, overly complicated lore that I'm sure none of us really paid much attention to as kids. And everything makes a lot more sense if you don't pay attention to the cutscenes. In this game, you have the choice between three different Crunchlings. The guy, the girl, and this totally rad and juvenile Bart Simpson looking Crunchling. Can I just say, there is something unsettling about the faces and movements on all of these hellish little nightmares. I'm having a bit of a panic attack over here watching them dance. They look like a cross between a hairy caveman and... 
Garfield. And Captain Crunch is just up there at the side like, Hmm, do you like my little freaks? I think I'm gonna pick the one in the middle, mainly because he has shoes. Oh, thank God we can change up their colors. I don't think it will be much of a help, but we'll see how it looks in different skins. Wow, guys, I think I just came up with the most original looking Crunchling. I'm speechless. So you wind up in this weird looking cave, which turns out to be the humble abode of your little crunchling. Nice place. And the captain will pop in on occasion to tell you how the game works and to track your overall progress. He leaves you with an endless supply of cereal to feed your pet, activities to keep him healthy and build his stats, and feathers to tickle his feet. Alright, something about this is really weird. When I started to look at this with my special eyes, it becomes a lot less wholesome than I was led to believe growing up. Why do I feel like the captain is actually a soul? monster that doesn't really care about the love and affection that goes into raising crunchlings and that his only real goal is to use the crunchlings as a tool for destruction. Am I the only one that's seeing that? I mean, does this room look comfortable to you? A lava lamp for warmth? Constantly being monitored? And to top things off? Listen to how depressed this little guy sounds. <laughs> the captain can really say is, Oh yes, they need more cereal. This is starting to look like a prison. Hey Captain, what happens once they're big and strong? Like I said earlier, in order to grow your crunchlings, you need to train them through a series of activities that targets their speed, jump ability, and strength. Speed training takes place in an area called Backwardia, where you have to race against a freakishly quick turtle who, to add insult to injury, runs backwards. It's not actually that hard to beat him if you really put effort into it, but say you happen to stumble over an obstacle and you instantly lose your place. It's so unforgiving and it really isn't easy to make much of a recovery after you've slipped up. Look at this guy, he's just rubbing his victory in my face, kicking dirt over my lifeless corpse. If you want to work on increasing your jump distance, you train in Computica, which looks exactly how it sounds. In this session, you have to press the spacebar to make your way up to the highest platform, gathering crunch berries along the way for bonus points, whilst you avoid the sharp ends of the motherboards and processors. And the quicker you make it to the top, the higher your score. But wait, the spikes don't even hurt you? You'd think they'd make it a little more challenging, but I guess it's just meant for stylistic purposes and to just intimidate us. The last area of training is on Planet Jurassica. What the? You're just throwing rocks at rocks. Just hold down the spacebar as soon as the countdown ends and let the game do all the work. Oh, and get bonus points for hitting the Stegosaurus Velocal Birds. Seriously, that's all this is. I'm more fascinated with whatever's going on in the background. That background has no business being in this game. I feel like it belongs more in Street Fighter than anything else. Once all the meters are full, then you're ready to challenge the Crunchium Thieves who look like gremlins that have a gym membership? What in the- They're massive! Once the Crunchium are defeated, the game ends with a bit of an ambiguous cliffhanger ending, which is a move you totally expect to see from a dev team that has some kind of planned sequel. Guess if it has a sequel. It does not. I mean, it kind of seems weird to me, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Way to go! You've saved Crunchium City and all the world's Crunchium! Thanks to you, there will be plenty of Cap and Crunch cereal forever! Three cheers for the greatest Crunchling athlete! The Crunchium Thieves are history! Together, we train the greatest Crunchling athlete They probably died. What? And that was my super nostalgic video on cereal box games. I had a lot of fun making this. If you guys like this one, you'll probably like my video on DVD games. You can find at the end of the video. I, they don't have those pop-up thingies anymore. Never mind. I'm Bob Dunga, and I'll be back next week with more trash. Bye. <laughs>